Want some help? Oh. You're... You are... Yeah. I'm Batman. Hi, this is Michael Uslin. You're listening to Batman on Film. I'm vengeance. I have given a name to my pain. Welcome to episode number 119 of the Social Hour, a BatmanOnFilm.com podcast. I am the host of this here Batman on Film show, and I'm also the founder of Batman on Film, Bill Ramey. And with me is senior BOF contributor, Ryan Haas. Ryan, how are you, sir? I'm good. I'm good. You're all batman up, and I'm all... (laughs) Texas Rangers and Dallas Cowboys up. Right. That's, That's okay. Right. I'm just look okay. Look around me, man. Look, look, look yeah. here. I'm representing still. So yeah. We are here today to talk about uh or give you a non-spoiler reaction to the flash, which I saw Monday night here in Dallas at the local press screening. And Ryan, uh, I'll let you you saw it last night, but I'll let you describe mm-hmm. your viewing situation. Mm-hmm. Uh, where you went and how far you traveled and mm-hmm. everything. So, how was it? Mm. Well, I I can't believe I get to talk to Bill Ramey about a Michael Keaton Batman movie that's wow. new. Yeah. This is crazy. Yeah. Stuff yes. is cool. Yes. Um, yeah. So I was I was getting twitchy, Bill. I was getting nervous. Like, yeah. I, I mean, ever. For the Batman, my expectations I kept tempered the whole time. Everybody's like, "Aren't yeah. you hyped? Aren't you hyped?" I'm like, "No." I'm like, "I just want to see the movie and experience the movie." But for the Flash, it's been a completely different story because not only has this film been in the works for like a thousand years yes. for, through the iterations, like back here I've got my, I think it's the Batman Begins script book or something, and there's some intro from Goyer in it talking about, oh the next movie's the flash and it's gonna be like this you know and so like th- this movie's yeah. been through development hell for years yeah that's like almost 20 years ago so it's nuts and so um and obviously all the stuff we've had to go through with the dceu this is like the end of the dceu you know other than aquaman i guess the new Aqu- next aquaman so ever since this movie came out in at cinemacon early 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 People have just been hyping it up like crazy. And then they've had all these crazy fan screenings. And I wonder if Warner Brothers is, has been doing all these early screenings as a way to circumvent doing actual like traditional film marketing. Because I'm like, oh, we're like a week out. And there's like, where's Keaton on the talk shows? And I know he's filming Beetlejuice and stuff. But like, where's that stuff? Where's the directors talking? Where's well, the they've interviews? got the WGA strike. So all the the talk shows are are dark you know exactly so that's i'm so i'm like i was i feel like we were i hate saying it but it feels like we've been robbed of like good yes content from because i part of this experience that i was looking forward to so much was getting to see people like keaton talk about coming back as batman and behind the scenes stuff and all that kind of thing so it's been a really weird experience and so all these fan screenings have been happening and I was just like really getting like, man, everybody and their grandma's seen this movie before me. <laughs> and I'm like, I'm, I, I want to yeah. see it. Yeah. Um, and so when they unveiled the DC fan first screenings, I was excited because like for the Batman, they were just basically in any IMAX theater 
Um, but for some reason for the flash, it was only in a very small handful of theaters. And the closest one to me was in Washington was at, outside of Washington, yeah. DC, yeah. which is like four hours away. And I was like, well, I guess that's what I'm doing. So I yeah. got the tickets um, and they all sold out within like an hour. <clears throat> and I was, that was what I was going to do. I was going to see it um, a, a week from now. And then at the last second, um, a fan screening popped up um, in Charlotte and in Concord, which is a city that's right out of Charlotte, um, North Carolina, which is about two hours away from me. Um, so I jumped on that and got to see it a week earlier. Um, so that's what I did yesterday. I, it, the screening was like at seven o'clock. So I, you know, I heard other stories from people like, uh, Andy D. Genova from Holy Batcast. He, you know, he saw it a few weeks ago and said, oh, I was there four hours early and I wasn't the first person in line. So, and I've been to other early screenings like that. I got to see Justice League 2017 at an early screening and, I got there maybe half an hour before and the line was just gigantic and they, and they were telling us at the time, Oh, you might not get in. And we did, but we were at the, like the second row of the theater. Yeah. You know, yeah, doing this. Yeah, 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 so yeah, I didn't want yeah. that for the flash. So, uh, so I, sh so I, I showed up to the theater maybe three hours early. I was like the second person there um, before they even started forming where the line was going to be. And I called the theater like a day in advance asking like, you know, you know, people are going to be going to be there. there there's going to be a line. Right. And they were like, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And then there wasn't. Um, but it all worked out and they eventually made the line and I got in and I was able to game the system and get concessions delivered to my seat, even though like the app didn't have the theater listed because it's an unlisted screening. So I just got it for another screening. And in the comments, I was like, deliver it to this other theater. <laughs> yeah with the other seat and it totally yeah, worked yeah so i was excited about that so yeah so uh and then actually ended up filling two theaters um at wow. this uh, amc concord mills um so i was a little worried that you know uh, you know maybe about two hours before there was already like 60 people in line but they filled up two two of the screenings uh with people um so it was very full and um, so the audience seemed to have a, a really good time with it. And uh, it was definitely a fun way to see the movie for the first time with a whole bunch of people that c clearly wanted to be there mm -hmm. to experience it as well. I, yeah. yeah, I went to the press screening. Oh, well, it's Dallas <laughs> press screening. It was in uh, Addison at an AMC. <clears throat> and uh, it was when I first contacted the uh, the PR firm here that that uh that uh, uh takes care of all warner brothers screenings i was asking you know any information about the flash and first uh she told me she said it's going to be the week of the 12th and i was like really i wow. mean you have all these fan screenings and exactly it's almost become a moot point and um you know they're doing a big imax uh the when the imax fan screenings is on the 12th and i'm like Almost, a, you know, right. so I nab tickets for that because, yeah, uh, Joanne, you know, Joanne Hyde, who reviews films for us, uh, Batman on film, she she's in Denver and theirs is the 13th. Their screening is the 13th. And I'm like, so usually yeah. they take place the same day, you know, around the country. And I'm like, well, I might as well just go to the IMAX screening because you get you the know, better. I mean, and version, I get sick yeah. beforehand, you know. But yeah. I did that, so I uh, dabbed tickets, and then they emailed me, I mean, right after that, basically, they emailed me back and said, okay, it's going to be the 5th, doing it, you know, a week early. So it was uh, Monday night. So I went down there, we went early and hung out, because it's kind of like an entertainment area, mm -hmm. and with me and the announcer, and uh, mm -hmm. we walked over there, and uh, there was this huge line, and I'm yeah. like, oh, wow, I didn't know there was going to be a fan screening, too. So my first thought was, yeah, okay, are they screening with press and and because I've been to those where they that's have, so, oh everyone that yeah. I've been to is like the theater's full and then they have like the two seat two sections in the middle yeah. for like reserved for press. I actually got to yeah. see John Wick for two weeks early, yeah, which was a crazy fun experience, um, and that's how they had it set up. But yeah. uh, but I got in like they had press, but for that one I also like won. They had like the general fan con general fan tickets, but then they had yeah. like a social media fan thing. And I got that the harder yeah. one to get. 
uh and so i got like a john wick coin and stuff and got on a vip list so i got to sit okay. in the press like section for oh, that cool. so cool. that's how these uh flash screens were set up for us too so they were actually press. they did two they they screened it on two theaters uh at the same time so it was one was all press yeah. oh and wow. yeah and so that was like like maybe a third full, but just spread out all through, you know, so there was, you know, mm -hmm. and then I'm, I'm quite, I'm quite sure that the other one filled up completely because I saw that line, you know, that line yeah. was long. Yeah. Long. Yeah. Like, like people showed up and there weren't people showing up in costumes, but there was every, like every third person had a DC related shirt yeah, on yeah. or something yeah. like that. Yeah. yeah. And uh, so Cause like it was started at seven. So we were, we stayed at the restaurant bar until like six 30. Cause it was just like basically across just right next to it and walked over there. Yeah. And uh, so they were still hadn't let the, the big uh, general crowd in and anyway, got in, they had two screens. Maybe they did three, three theater. I don't know. Cause that line was long. So got in, wore my Batman on film 25 t-shirt. Rachel had yeah. hers on. I wore mine too. Yeah, got in there. And uh, so, you know, uh, I did, you know, my review was up on Batman on film. If you haven't read it, check it out. I did a reaction video afterwards. I I, I was hyped up for this film and it kind of goes against, you know, I'm not a big Batman with super powered beans person, you know, in team up movies. No, but <laughs> the, the return of Michael Keaton just superseded all all of that just threw it out um, you know that part of my batman sensibly is away because i just wanted to see michael keaton as batman again mm -hmm. and so i was hyped up for the film mm -hmm. and then of course you hear since uh since CinemaCon, you know yeah. how good it is and yeah. you know like uh, you know it's one of the very best comic book films ever and it's and a strange going. feeling to have like warner brothers be so yeah confident in a in a dc movie like this you know it's and i haven't we haven't seen that it fit feels since man of steel B dark knight rises in terms of how these films roll like has ever, ever since bbs since, came out it was like uh oh yeah you know? yeah yeah yeah. it's they were really hyped for man of steel i lived yeah. it um yeah they were i mean joker about, that's kind of is a reaction outlier. um but probably going back to like Dark Knight trilogy, really, to be yeah. honest. Yeah. Uh, so I, you know, after seeing it, um, I, there's a little bit of part of me I almost wrote it in the review mm -hmm. that, mm -hmm. um, to you know, temper your expectations a little bit because I think some mm -hmm. of the proclamations were really hyperbolic. Uh, you know, I I wouldn't say. It's one of the one of the greatest superhero films of all time. It's if you take DC films, you take out all solo Batman stuff. It, it's in my top five. So, how, yeah, I know. And uh, yeah. that's what I wanted to not necessarily fight you on, but wanted to just try to we were texting about this last night before my screening. I'm like, how how can it's and it, that's interesting because it's hard. to it, it's I get what you're saying now that I've seen the movie. It's hard to describe yeah. that. Where you can say like, well, it's not the great one of the greatest DC movies of all time. It's good, but also it's in the top five. It's if you know, it's like how does how do those two things actually like how does that compute? You know, because yeah. you's like if you don't count Batman, it's like number two behind Superman the movie. So I'm like, yeah, well that means it's really good, right? And yeah, it it's is, really good. Yeah, it's really good. Yeah. It's very very good. Um, now I would say there's a big just for me there's a big difference on how much I like. Superman the movie to the Flash and the rest of them because I see I mean there's a big gap and that's because yeah. Superman the movie is I was uh, 13 when that came out and yeah it was the first I, big time superhero movie I ever saw and it was like the first yeah. one really since yeah you know I, ever I got to uh and that movie is still so special I I yeah. got to take my kid to go see Superman the movie at the Alamo Draft House here uh, last year. And I didn't know how she was going to take it. And I, you know, it's a long movie and it's, you know, yeah. it's, it's its own thing. And, um, and every time we go to the theater, she's like, Oh, this is where we saw the real Superman movie, you know? And she, yeah. she just, it, she, it connected with her too. And 
it's like that movie is so special. And I, and I, you know, seeing all the, these reactions and I don't want to name names here, but you know, seeing some of the, the social media reactions online, I'm like, man, I, I wish I could live in the world where I'm one of these people that, that comes out and it's like, okay, here's the ranking. It's top two. Like it's one of the best movies ever made. I'm like, I, I, I can't do that. I'm no. not that person no. anymore. Even with the Batman, like it's been yeah. over a year since the Batman came out and I'm still like, I don't really know where it, <laughs> yeah. Ranks. I need to live with the movie for a sure. while. Yeah. Um, and I feel like this flash movie, I don't know. You know, people were texting me last night, like, okay, what'd you think? Where do you rank it? And I'm like, I don't know. I don't know how people are going to take, I'm, I don't know how people are going to take this movie to be honest. Yeah. You know, I, I don't even know. I don't, I, I, I thought it was really good, but I can see why some people are going to love it. I see why some people are going to have a giant, what the hell, you know, um, I, I don't know how the general audience is going to take this movie because now that the reviews are coming out, the tomato meter's good, um, like really good, <clears throat> but you're also starting to get some like two star reviews and C minuses and what people were so stupid. Like, how could they say that? Yeah. Like, so we're starting to get like the wide, you know, gap on opinions. So I would, I would urge people who are excited to, to do what you said, temper your expectations. Yes. Don't read not, anything other than listening to this podcast and then, and then go of see course. it and yeah and then we'll reconvene yeah so yeah you <clears throat> if you're talking just dc movies and um you take out all of the batman you know solo batman films because mm-hmm. if i if i included the solo batman films and even if i included some some marvel stuff spider-man amazing you know uh Spider-Man 2. Uh there's you know mm-hmm. there's some Marvel oh, Logan. So good. There's some Marvel mm-hmm. things that even I would inject mm-hmm. uh and in, maybe even over the Flash. Sure. Cer- certainly I can see that. You know, certainly probably all three of the Dark Knight trilogy films. Pro- uh, oh yeah. The Batman for sure. The Batman's my favorite Batman movie. I mean, I, I yeah. I've said that it just is um yeah. That doesn't mean I that doesn't mean I don't love Batman 89. It doesn't mean I don't love the Dark Knight trilogy, I know. you know. I know. So, I, it's, it's, you know how that it's goes still, with people. It's still, oh yeah, it's still an embarrassment of riches that we're living in now. This movie is one of those like little minor miracles where it's like, well, I don't even know how this thing exists. You know, we got Michael Keaton back and it's a Flash movie and we've been waiting so long for a Flash movie. And But after it was over and as much as I loved it, I was still like, my, my mind went straight to like, man, I just love the Dark Knight trilogy. Like, we're never going to get something that good again. You know, yeah. like how... Yeah this movie and what it is and what it has to be and how it has to be positioned as like a reset for the universe and things like that. I'm like, man, that this is great because for the, I'm glad this is the movie that did it because that's built into the flash as like a character, as a concept. It's he's really a good vehicle for that. But I'm like, man, when can we, and I know like Matt Reeves stuff is, is, is very, very close to that, but I'm like, man, we're never going to, I feel like it's a tall order to get those, singular vision movies that can re- that really grab the characters and i mean i don't know it's hard yeah. to put in words cuz the this movie does a lot of that but man it's it 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 made still at the end of this it made me still feel like you know dark knight trilogy is just very special and yes of yes uh, absolutely yeah it's just hard yeah to yes. reconcile with that it was a you know <clears throat> Batman 89 and the Dark Knight trilogy, these were, you know, especially Dark Knight, mm-hmm. they were cultural phenomenon. You know, yeah. I don't see this being, you know, that. Yeah. I, you know, I, yeah. I, uh, and this movie is coming out in a strange time and with the, you know, the writer's strike and there's a, not a, there, there's a lot of good movies out right now. It's yeah. kind of like a lot of the, and it, despite there being like, you know, the writer strike and content and all this, like, you know, when Batman 89 came out, it was easier for it to be like movies were movies, you know, now we have like, and when the Dark Knight came out, you know, it, like streaming and uh, there wasn't nearly as much grabbing. Yeah. yeah. Uh, and and, and the, 
the attention. And of course, the DCU isn't the the paragon of, you know, yeah. superhero media. You know, the yeah. MCU is kind of like here right now, but they'll get back. Um, and while we were waiting in line, like this, you know, this the animated Spider-Verse movie, I, I'm glad it's doing amazing. And people, multiple people showed up for that movie while I was in line for The Flash in costume. So you saw two or three Spider-Mens show up. As I left the theater um, last night, late, I passed like a Burger King and a family was getting out of their car with like five little kids dressed up like Spider-Man, probably getting the <laughs> Spider-Man burger, yeah. you know, um, yeah. and I'm like, and I'm just, and I'm out of the flash and I'm seeing people, Spider-Mans walking around. Yeah. I'm like, this, this Spider-Man thing is a, is a moment right now. And yeah. I don't feel like we're going to see little flashes and little Keaton Batman's walking around, you know, and yeah. the way that this movie has been delayed a thousand times. And yeah, you got the Halloween costumes for Keaton's Batman, like last Halloween and flash last yeah. Halloween. And I mean, it's strange. It's yeah. strange. And I, and I, and I'm, I'm worried that this movie as good as it is, will be kind of a victim of like other things, just taking the cultural focus and not doing as well as it really could have if it had a better, <laughs> it was better I, I, position. I will say, and I wrote this in the review. <clears throat> this it could well, this part I didn't. I think it it may have some legs. I think the rewatchability factor is very high for this film. It is because Absolutely. I want to see it again because mm -hmm. I know there's things that I missed. Uh, mm -hmm. You know, there's a lot going on here. So let's mm -hmm. we'll save Keaton for last. Keaton Batman. Okay. Okay. So, okay. Uh, just in general, I'll just you know I thought the movie was really good. I would not put it in the great category. Uh, the great category, you know, not not the category that's great, you know, under great. So if I'm trying to be clear here, uh, but um, yeah, it's I really <laughs> liked it. I um, God, it's it, it, it's tough. It's tough. David Goyer even said once, you know, it's tough to make a movie about a guy who runs really fast, you know? And, yeah, 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 yeah. You know? Because that's... Yeah. I grew up... That's really what The Flash did. He ran really fast, you know? And he'd, like, run around people and make a tornado and, you know, and they would capture him. But I love the whole time travel, alternate realities, universe, the whole... Whatever, whole thing. And um, I... Uh, I thought that... Um, uh, Andy Muschietti did a heck of a job and Christina Hodson who wrote the script mm -hmm. of, I mean, there's so much, so much, it's hard. It had to be hard. So yeah. I give them, I get to crack the code on the story because, props. because yeah. in this modern, the modern era of when this version of the movie, I mean, when the DCEU flash started, you know, with, with the family, you and, the, yeah. the Dungeons and Dragons got like it, this this particular iteration has gone through like three or four or five different yes. like things with with Ezra Miller Flash like different creative groups and different stories so I'm glad this is the one that made it yeah <laughs> because we get Keaton we get like I think we got probably ended up with more substance it feels than it it before. yeah um and you got to give props to uh the comic book guys who did Flashpoint, you know? Oh, yeah. The yeah. premise of Flashpoint was, is used in here, mm -hmm. you know? Mm -hmm. uh, it's not a, it's not a straight-up adaptation of Flashpoint. Right. You know? Um, right. The alternative Batman we see is not Thomas Wayne and, all you know, all that. But those right. guys, you know, the, the core aspect of, you know, Barry trying to fix things and save his mom and, you know, all that, mm -hmm. that's yeah. there. That's there in the movie. It's very enjoyable. Um, it's one of those movies, like the the concept is it's 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 definitely one of those crazy high concept movies. And I feel like, you know, my girlfriend is is very new to DC, and we've really been trying to like, okay, well, what what do you need to watch before this? And we've watched Batman eighty nine, and I'm like, okay, well, ideally you would watch like. Batman 89 and Batman Returns and Man of Steel 
maybe BVS, you know, Justice League and, and then the Flash, you know, but I think you could I think you could go into this and just kind of get it um, because they do try to their scenes, the way they set things up, they they try to smartly give you the info you need. Watching all the stuff beforehand is obviously going to enhance the experience but mo- of clearly most people that watch this show have just seen everything. Um, I I was never the biggest fan of Ezra Miller Flash interpretation. You know, I mm-hmm. and I hate saying what I'm about to say, but it's like I just want to see the comic book flash on the screen, which really kind of for my generation means like I want to see animated Justice League flash on the screen. I want to see like Barry Allen in the th- I want to see something closer to like the TV show, you know. Um but if this movie does as good as it could with the slightly wonky setup that led into it from Zack Snyder's DCEU where you got the Flash and he's already the Flash and you don't see the origin and Iris West oh she's there she's not like and they even they address that in this version and even some of the reviews are like oh yeah like it kind of this movie kind of uh, makes the Snyder Justice League the canon version based off of what they're yeah saying in in it um with some of the characters like boy I hope you watched the Snyder cut because when Iris West shows up in this, you're like, Oh, they're talking about scenes from the Snyder cut. Um, anyway, I don't, I, if you didn't already like Ezra Miller's flash, I don't think this movie's going to change your mind. And in fact, I appreciated the fact that this movie kind of plays into, they even hype up the, the quality, the outer, the, you know, the social awkwardness, um, and thinking about it more, I kind of appreciated uh, that setup because I was like, oh, you know, the only one of the only other giant socially awkward DC hero interpretations that was really front and center to me is Michael Keaton's Bruce Wayne and Batman. Yeah. So it's yeah. actually a really interesting pairing. Um yeah beyond you know just what the way they portray the characters on top of these similarities and and the moments that you get between keaton and either barry both berries i thought was just really well done and i just there's so much to this film where i'm like oh, i wanted more of that i wanted more of the character interactions i wanted more of this um i have i have plenty of nitpicks plenty of well, there should there should have been more Supergirl, or there should have yeah. been more of this or more of that. And why didn't they do this? Like they set this up and then didn't pay it off, or um, they could have done this entire scene differently, and that would have been better. Like I have a bunch of those. Um, but overall, like the the concept and the tone is is great. Like people weren't lying about the Back to the Future like vibes. Even the score a lot of times tries to it felt to me like it was trying to evoke that like weird quirky time mm-hmm. thing. Um, and I think the most surprising thing to me coming out of it was <clears throat> the film's sense of humor and use of humor is so unlike any other DC film. And I guess I attribute that to Muschietti's direction. You know, when you watch like, the suicide squad you're like oh that's a james gunn movie and you went when you watch um you know any of snyder movies it's obvious oh that's a Zack snyder movie and not that this feels like it or something like that but uh mushiet is it but there you could tell like there's, this is a this is a very like there's a whole bunch of interesting humor type moments here and it works yes, but it's it one of those things where you have to kind of be down with that <clears throat> And I would, and that part probably was the most surprising thing to me so much. So that, and the, like, this is a PG 13 movie y'all. Like I, I was very excited to be able to, I was like, oh, I'm going to take my kid to go, my five-year-old to go see this on father's day weekend and stuff. And after seeing it early, I'm like, well, I hate to say it, but I'm, 
I don't think I'm going to, I think I need to change my plans because it's yeah. not, and I hate being able to be like, sorry, kid, we can't go see the, I, see the flash together. We can't go see Michael Keaton's Batman together, but I'm just gonna have to wait on this one because of the, uh, the language and the humor and the, that kind of stuff. Um, so that kind of feels bad. It feels like a weird repeat repetition that, you know, we've got a lot of friends here, like, um, talked to like Justin Kowalski when he, and he's got his classic story about, you know, missing yeah. Batman 89 in the theater. And I feel like that's going to unfortunately repeat <laughs> itself here. I was excited to take my kid to see it, but I don't think, uh, I don't think I'm going to now. So that, that feels bad. That's a feel bad for me. Um, but, <laughs> uh, but what <laughs> I was just like, I was thinking, um, I, I'm, ta- I'm, I'm taking my boys next yeah. Wednesday. Yeah. And, but they're 26 and 21 it's perfect years for old. them. Yeah. So yeah. Like, yeah. like I can't take it's a five year old. Really like different. if she was yeah. like, if she was like 12, cause I've been there, I've been there back, you know, hell when Batman begins came out, you know? Uh, oh yeah. Jake yeah. was, Jake was four, you know? So you know, I've yeah. been there. That's and she's seen smiling. she's seen yeah. 89 in returns like a thousand times. She's seen the Burton Schumacher ones a thousand times at this point. But uh and I can like, you know, okay, don't don't yeah. look at Catwoman's scratch the die in the face. But like there's stuff in this movie where I'm like, okay, I, I just I can't do that. <laughs> so uh, yeah. To speak to just to speak to uh Ezra Miller and, and the their performance, it he's good. He's really yeah. good. And I never liked um that take. Right. You know, that's what I was saying. That take like, and really uh and really Ezra Miller as as Barry. Um yeah. I, I and not to be that guy also, I mean, I see the flat because I, I, I criticize people, don't don't judge casting and blah blah blah, and sure. you know, and all that. Yeah. Um but, but they yeah. play into it like they yeah. it's not just an because sometimes you'll see these movies and you'll be like oh this this actor is in a completely different movie than the rest of the movie yeah. this is one of those cases where and 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 Tezra's miller's credit and and the filmmaker's credit like that has been consistent with this version of the flash but this is the, this is obviously his time to shine the flash's time to shine um and although it's not, this is a new iteration, a new take, a very particular take, but it's a very particular take on the character, just like Keaton's Batman is a very mm-hmm. particular take on Bruce Wayne and Batman. So I do appreciate it on that level. And yeah. they, it was executed very well in this film. And I really loved how you have the two berries because it, the younger version, like the 20 year old version in the <clears throat> in the 30 year old version or whatever, they, they do have a dialogue with each other and it kind of makes like one helps the other kind of thing. And they are able to like, man, I get why people don't like me. You know, they actually address that in the movie and it's, I appreciated that. Yeah. Yeah. I thought, I thought it was seamless. The two berries just seamless. It's like literally they were, you know, there were twins on there or something, you know? Yeah. And it was that just, was it, and really, it was, I, yeah. And I felt, I felt for Barry yeah. with his mother, you yeah. know, I, I had a emotional connection to him, which I never had before. Mm-hmm. And of course, uh, you know, full disclosure, I don't like BBS. I don't like, uh, Zack Snyder's justice league. I didn't like, you know, the whole take of that. So that, there could have been a little bit of, you know, that filtering down, into i just you know but mm-hmm. but on the other hand i like i like wonder woman and i thought momo was great as aquaman but that's a whole different conversation but yeah uh but i just i i got this is the first time i really enjoyed him mm-hmm. or, or them in the film and really that works because you know there's the two berries maybe three i don't know you know never know but maybe four so um but i i felt for him Barry, yeah, you know the, the character, in in the movie a lot. So almost, you know, I mm. I wrote um on Facebook, uh, just my regular Facebook, like, hey, if you're looking for a movie, go see Father's Day. You know, go check out the Flash. It's really good, especially if you're my vintage and 
You know, yeah. you want to see Michael Keaton as Batman. And I said, yeah. maybe this would have been worked better on Mother's Day. You know, it would have been more, more of an appropriate <laughs> release. But I said, you'll get it when you see the yeah, yeah, the yeah, 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 yeah. So, yeah, yeah, for sure. So I, I'm, yeah, I, like I said, I had a connection with him, the character of Barry. And I, I felt I was pulling for him. I felt bad for him <clears> and all that. Yeah. And especially that there's that, lat, you know, the scene toward the end. Where yeah. He's got a really make, well done. He makes a big decision, you know, yeah. to yeah. Uh, yeah. try to and fix even though, everything. Yeah. Just that third act, man. I just, the like the marketing really like, I'm like, okay, have we seen like all this movie and everything? But I, I as the movie kept going, I was like, well, how is it going to end? What is going to happen? How is it going to put things, mm-hmm. leave, how's it going to leave things, you know? Um so that part was unexpected. I, I, you know, the way that they, the way that that played out. It was just like, um, I, like I, I said in my review, you know, I, I'm, I feel like I'm an expert or I should be well-versed in time travel with all the time travel movies, you know, I've seen on TV <laughs> and, you know, on the big screen and, you know, how um, sometimes, you know, they, they kind of play into uh, sometimes things are going to happen no matter what no matter what you do, you yeah. know, mm-hmm. uh, it's just meant to be that way. And, you know, there's also the aspect of once you jack with the past and change, it, can you ever really <laughs> get things back to the way they were exactly? Yeah. You know, yeah. that's, that's, I think that's part that's in there a little bit. So, and I did like, uh, and I'm not going to give away the joke, but um, speaking of back to the future, just, mm-hmm. Think, keep back to the future in your mind. Yeah, um, for sure. You know, when, when you go see this movie, not because <clears throat> this is a time travel, uh, changing things in the past movie, you, you'll get it when you see it. It, it was really, I thought it was very clever. Very yeah. clever. Yeah. 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 I love that that's, that the back, back to the future is like the, the, the modern cornerstone for time travel movies, you know, like I guess back in the day, it'd be like, oh, it's like HG Wells, you know, the time machine or what. But yeah. like, you know, this movie uses it, Avengers, you know, Endgame uses it, you know, just to kind of set up what's going on. But the way that they do it in this is a is a different thing. And it fits like the cultural touchstone like fits, yeah. you know, um, being able to use talk about a movie in another movie um, or multiple movies for that matter. Like it just it, it works here. It works for this for this version. OK, so let's, let's talk about Supergirl, Sasha Kai, Supergirl. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um I in my review I thought um that she was really good of what she had. Yes. Because it's not as even though it's like she's the third lead, it's not mm-hmm. as a big of a role in the whole grand scheme of the film as you would believe, you know, based on yes, marketing and advertisement. Yes. And um, I get it. I get why. I get I totally get, you know, it makes sense <clears throat> uh in, in the context of the film where she's in it at the at first and then you know and when we last see her i just it it makes sense right but yeah right. it's not as big as you would expect expect right 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 i uh i was impressed i really enjoyed her performance and the way the character was handled and the way that they took again like the way that they took the um kind of this general idea and set up of it from the from flashpoint Fla- and flashpoint out how to superman like, absolutely m- melded yeah. in here and that, that really worked for me um it it is kind of one of those like thinkless roles you know th- if that makes sense because like she doesn't have it's it, from what's actually in the movie it's more like she's there the things that she does is it really it serves a purpose in like what drives the story forward and oh she has to do x y and z you know um you know she's give you know she you don't really get to know her yeah it doesn't give her much of a chance yeah. to really have a lot of character development you know who she is the, you know just yeah. from the dialogue you know who she is you know where she's from you know why she's there yeah uh, you know she's good yeah right yeah yeah, yeah that's yeah, yeah. that's about but the, i wanted more i wanted that, more yeah 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 i wanted more for sure and uh you know some of the 
I don't know. I don't want to call it hyperbole. Some of the people that have been saying like, oh, look, she's got to be, ah, you know, she's got to be in the Supergirl movie and all this stuff, you know, like she's going to be in a million. Th- like, I don't know. I don't know. Like she could be, she couldn't be. I, yeah. I don't want to say like it, the door's open for them to use her again or this version of the character again, because it's a multiverse movie. You can do whatever mm-hmm. you want. Same thing with Keaton, you know? Um, yeah. Please more Keaton. <laughs> Why would you not do more Keaton? He's there. Um, but, uh, but yeah, I just, I, she was good, but I, I could have used more. And I guess that's really my overall thing for the whole movie. Um, as long as the movie is, I'm like, man, they could have had less of this and more of that. And there's, you know, I, I don't want to spoil anything, but, I can see why they had tough choices to make. And and again, I hate like going back to set photos, but I'm like, Hey, there was that set photo of Supergirl that was like at this location. And that wasn't in the movie or, <laughs> or and stuff mm-hmm. like that. I'm like, there's, so there's clearly more stuff that, uh, and I hope we get to see it, you know, at yeah, least on the extended the video, cut at least. The flash would be great at some point. So. I would, I would eat that up. I would love, I would love uh, if we had uh, yeah more, cause there was, more scenes, alternate scenes. Like I'm sure that there, there's a lot. Um, and Muschietti's already talked about a lot of that stuff. Oh, there was this scene that we cut, or that thing that was fleshed yeah. out more that we had to, to let, you know, get rid of. That's got to be tough for filmmakers because th- that's kind of like their baby, you know. Yeah, and it's and, not always up to them, you know, especially yeah. for a film like this that has to yeah. tee up other things and. Unless yeah. you're Nolan, yeah, you know, unless exactly. you're Nolan or unless you're Nolan, is. yeah, because they got to go with the one writer strike and be like, yeah, no Justice League Mortal, <laughs> yeah, yeah, they they cancel um, other movies too. I was happy to see going back, going back to Batman, but not the Batman that I want to talk about the most here. But I was uh, mm, happy Affleck. that Ben, I think Ben Affleck did indeed <laughs> get his cool way to segue out of the role. It's Batman, and I totally get why he says this was, you know, this is some of the, this is the best. I finally figured out the character. This is the best shit I've done as Batman ever was in this, and in this, in this extended cameo. I get it, you know. Um, mm-hmm. He was very Batmanish, you know. Yeah, very heroic Batmanish. It's like, yeah, it's like Brave and the Bold. It's, it's as close as you could get to like a modern live action brave and the bold batman that's done everything and seen everything but it's still batman at the end of the day you know yeah. I feel, it's like this is probably what george clooney's batman and robin batman was trying to be i guess kind of you know what i mean like yeah he's like i've reconciled stuff i'm still batman but i'll never get past like i'm still gonna be batman forever yeah <laughs> you know what i mean and i um yeah uh I love the other some of the other cameos we got from and and at, at, at that beginning sequence mm-hmm. from other from other actors like yeah it was fun to be in that Justice League world and that was a really fun thing cuz a lot of times you see these movies you're like oh where's the Justice League you know yeah. why don't we get to see it you know in this movie you kind of get some of that and you and it's worked into the story and I enjoyed that part of it quite a bit because it does flow pretty nicely into the setup for for what this movie the story of this movie yeah he um Affleck got a really good scene as Bruce Wayne when he talked when he's talking to Barry mm-hmm. you know uh I think the line you know the our scars make us who we are is great mm-hmm. it's a great line um mm-hmm you just didn't see you, you never really saw that Bruce Wayne and in, in his any of his prior uh performances in in those films and mm-hmm. you know Batman it's just that was just a a you know kick ass big spectacle action scene it's all, you know as Batman so yeah so I I, I enjoy I I uh, I like I'm happy for him uh it was cool Despite, you know, in spite, I'm not a big fan of that Batman costume. That I'm was a terrible co- Batman costume. I'm yeah. sorry. It's not I, because of the, it's not really because of the bluish <clears throat> gray that it is. It's kind of just, it was just way too busy and stuff on there. It was that busy. It felt, it makes sense. Like, I yeah. don't know. Like, I love the bl- that it's like the blue and gray, but man, it just, not my favorite, you know? Yeah. Yeah. 
It was the uh, yeah. So I I I did pass on those uh, McFarlane that McFarlane action yeah. figure just just yeah. Yeah. okay. No, I got the I got the uh, you know I my screening was in a giant. It was in the biggest mall I've ever been in my life, and I went to a Books a Million, and they had like the biggest multi McFarlane section I've ever seen with like oh, actually really? okay. everything in stock. Yeah, and they uh and they had like all of the multiverse Keaton statues. They had like four or five of them. So I'm like, okay. So I finally bought one and they had all the flash figures and they had Keaton's Batman figure and stuff like that. I'm like, Oh, you know, finally, like I've got, I've got the Keaton figure on pre-order, but I, I wasn't going to get the statue until Pete Vera started sending me photos. He's like, you know, you want it. You know, you want this. Uh, I'm like, okay, it looks good. I will, I'll wait until I see it in, if I ever see it in person. And then I did. And so I've got it and I had to plug it into the, the screening with me and all that. But, uh, yeah, it was pretty pretty nice. That pretty nice. I I held off buying that just because, um, I know that the the Pattinson statue from McFarlane, mm-hmm. I got it. I got it immediately, and then now you can get them in their, you know, half the price, or whatever. So I'm thinking, oh sure, you know, I'm thinking, okay, if I just hold off on this Keaton statue. Maybe I, I held it, off but... on the main key yeah. figure and then I know. it was yeah. impossible to find it is. until like just last week. Thank good. Thank God for Pete Vera because he was like, Oh, you can pre-order it on Best Buy now. And so yeah. I got two. So I can, after this, I can go or sometime later today, I can go pick, pick them up from Best Buy. So I I'm going to check on, see how much the, the stock of it, the availability yeah. of those are. If it's like, you know, there's still a lot available, then I'm going to, I'm going to gamble and hold off. So if I can get mm-hmm. it, and I'm not cheap. I'm just saying, you know. Plus, uh, you I know, know. it's a, it's you a know, toy hunt. Yeah. Did you got, get the 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 two Keaton pops? Yes. Okay. The yes. damaged one, the Walmart damaged one. Okay. Yeah, I don't have that one. That one I gotta okay. find. But I got the. I the, just found that one. The other. I got day. the 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 cowless, you know, Keaton. Oh. And I haven't I've seen that got one. yeah, I've got the um. Well, hell, hold on. <laughs> You know, I got the bat wing. Oh yeah. Bat wing. Yeah. Uh it's pretty nice. And then nice. See that pr- that looks pretty Keaton esque. He got the yeah, maskless one. Yeah. So yeah. Let's put him here. Pretty nice. All right now. Or you can go over <clears> here. <throat> we can see him. There you go. Nice. So I'm about to talk. I'm about to talk about you. So mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. all right. All right. So and I got the two McFarlane, you know. Um, yeah, the figures. maskless McFarlane. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. And I got the, what is it? Spin Master Batmobile, <clears throat> which is really good. Ooh, ooh, the Spin Master one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Got the Spin nice. Master one. All right. Nice. Let's turn this into uh, talking about Batman collectibles, Toys. but that's okay. Hey. Um, uh, Keaton's Batman. Mm-hmm. It was... Uh, Something, you know, never thought we'd see Keaton's Batman again, after, you know, um, just didn't, you know, and then it happens and it we've known for a while now, you know, mm-hmm. what, since how long now? It's been two or three years since that came out, you know? Yeah. Um, so I, I feel like, because people keep asking, do they... I don't know why they would say this. Do they do they poke fun of Keaton's Batman? Do they, you know, is it is it come off goofy? And you know, they're all. But I'm sure they're being very protective of this, you know, how he's portrayed. Yeah. And I, for one, I don't think Keaton would have done it unless it, it, you know, it was Keaton that he was engaged engaged in. Yeah. yeah and Keaton approved. And you know, even uh, Andy Muschietti talked about how he met with Keaton before and. Mm-hmm. Took all his input in how he oh. wanted to portray the the character, mm-hmm. and uh, he 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 just, he nailed mm-hmm. it. It was like, I mean, it just it was uh, like he didn't miss a beat in thirty yeah. plus years, you know. And uh, I, I like, I felt it was more eighty nine ish than. Batman Returns, and I don't say that to slight Batman Returns because it's not, you know, as much as I love Keaton, I'm not a huge fan of Batman Returns. But 
uh I thought it, just, it had more of the 89. It had vibe. more it had more of a hat tip to 89, I guess, yeah. in returns, but it didn't yeah. it didn't doesn't mean returns never happened. No, 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 no. Like no. Yeah. yeah. So it, it was I just, mean the return suits in the movie, right? Like yes. returns happen. Absolutely. Happens. Absolutely. <laughs> it's, there. Uh, it's yeah. I like um how he I I'm one who I like Batman Beyond where Batman I like when Bruce Wayne is old and there's what what's what's he do next History. you know yeah 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 you know uh dark knight returns and stuff yeah. like that love yeah and to batman see him at on, the end of his career yeah you know, yeah yeah or grand here he that. is you know here he is that he's I, I i'm sure he's playing his age he's probably 70-ish 60 mm-hmm. late 60s late 60s you know? early 70 yeah. yeah and he's you know, at Wayne Manor and just a recluse. He's got a long beard and long hair. And, um, and it seems like in one way he is, um, okay with having given up Batman and he says why, you know, in the, in mm-hmm. the movie. you think, is that a spoiler or not? Do you mean to hold it? I would think it's a spoiler. Okay. I would, All I right. wouldn't, I would let people experience that in the movie. Yeah. Yes. That's what I was thinking. I just want to double check. So it's. I think uh, I think I even saw an article that said there was even a longer version of that, like a longer scene that where he explains more about what okay. happened after and why and all that. Yeah. So, so. he seems resigned to it, um, but there's also a little bit later on in, in the in the film, he probably misses being Batman a little bit, you know. You know, and this is just coming to me like. This whole, like, if you just look at Batman, that within this movie, you know, you go for, for all the Batmans, you get in this movie, you look at, Ke- you know, Keaton's Batman and Affleck's Batman. The movie actually does a really good job of trying to repeat, like, do these, like, time echo kind of things of, like, oh, Batman does these things <laughs> in every multiverse. Um and then in a way, it kind of speaks to like the Dark Knight Rises Batman, where in Dark Knight Rises, you get like a well, what happens to Bruce Wayne when there is no Batman? And mm-hmm. of course, the way it's done in that movie is different than this one, but they kind of speak to each other, you know, like, yeah, yeah. W- what place does Bruce Wayne have when Batman's not needed? Uh, mm-hmm. And you see that Exa- absolutely. The, yeah. And you see the Keaton version of that in yeah. this. And I think and they come into a very similar play they get into a similar place not that it's like a retread but it's like a comic book kind of thing where a comic book different stories can explore similar themes differently um with the same character and you kind of get that with keaton's batman in this which is really fascinating which is really making me want to see the movie again it does it does because um you know he he talks to the berries Mm-hmm. And they fill they fill him in on what they're doing, what's going on, and you know, and it's also for me it was cool that they did they really didn't jack with um, that universe as it was established, you know, t- too much mm-hmm. in terms of you know pretty much until the, the events of the Flash, mm-hmm. Batman was you could the fill only, in the you could was the only I- superhero there was. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Yeah. It could be. Yeah. And and it leaves it up to the viewer too to to decide, like, okay, well, in is this this could this universe could be the Burton Bur- the Burton universe up until there. Or those movies could have could also be their own thing, you know, or or a, yeah, a I version bring, of those movies. Yeah, a version of those movies happen. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely, because I I wrote you know <clears throat> I can't go back to review. But I saw I just, that in your it, review. It, it, there were things in my mind spinning is like it. This could be what happened after Batman Returns, and you know, yeah, or it could be just another this slightly different version of yeah that batman it, like, in a branches, different in a, di- in a different world you know because it's not like batman forever happened you know it's not like yeah. you see a robin costume in the bat cave yeah you know yeah so yeah so there's all kind of that I mean this is a whole different podcast really because i have yeah. so many thoughts <laughs> so many thoughts about this and the multiverse thing and everything yeah. and all that and then you throw in the with the elseworlds uh banner at Warner oh, brothers so i'm mm-hmm. I, i'm gonna keep that 
get that idea because I want to I want to talk about that. But yeah, absolutely. Um, and you know, he yeah, he gave him for what they tell him, and they you know, and they just really is like you know, Barry the older Barry's like, you know, Batman will figure it out. He always figures things out, and he'll tell us yeah. what to do. And then Keaton hears their story, and you know, he's even like. Thinking, you know, there's a little bit of like, really, this is what the hell are you talking about here? You know, this is this making, yeah. me, you know, um, yeah. And then he, yeah, it's crazy know, to get like Keaton's Keaton's Batman being someone that is not phased by, you know, gods and aliens, you know. Yeah. And I was curious on how that would play at, like, how that would come across on screen um but it really worked like it really it worked for me because like he's he really lays it he's just now encountering this <clears throat> in his world and yeah. he's 70 years old or you know give or take you know right uh but it also i you know it from what they tell him what they he realizes <clears throat> batman needs to come back again yeah you know yeah yeah. Batman needs to return. <laughs> yes. yes. And I, I I like how all that plays out, you know, yeah. all of it. And it's, no, yeah. I mean, you know, going, he goes and look at all his costumes and mm -hmm. all his bat suits. And, mm -hmm. you know, he's, he's still, he's, it's very Keaton with, you know, you know, he's thinking, you know, he's Yeah. Thinking. And it was kind of like Batman Beyond where, you know, yeah. he wasn't Batman. He's like, uh, well, I'll let the kids use this stuff and maybe, I don't know. Yeah, kind of like a grumpy, like a I don't it's like get out of here, but I don't know. <laughs> and then eventually he's like, okay, I'll I'll join in, you know. Yeah. So it was like kind of a fun way that that plays out too. Yeah. The um, mm -hmm. did you see his introduction for the first time in the movie, or did you see the 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 clip that the Fandango I clip. clip? I did okay. not watch the clip. Yeah. I was so it was probably clips. yeah. It was. I would I, I go I can't help myself, you know, in some cases, especially with that Keaton. But yeah, it would be it was I can imagine it would have been a little bit cooler, if you will, not temperature wise, more cool if I didn't know that hadn't seen it. You know, I knew yeah. it you knew a scene like that was coming. I mean, we've seen yeah. the trailers with, yeah, I'm Batman, you know, mm -hmm. and yeah, 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 yeah. You need some help and but you want to get nuts. Like was, I feel like they uh they really the marketing i you know i guess the answer is don't watch the trailers but how can you watch the major trailers i feel like the major trailers kind of gave away like not gave away but like ruined a little bit too many of those moments they could have just stuck with one <laughs> just do the i'm batman and leave it there um because i was very really curious i think i've been even in a previous social hour, i was like oh maybe they're Surely they don't repeat that same like zoom in on Keaton and have him say the line, but they do. They do. That's yeah. that's what's in the movie. But it was in separate. It was in different scenes. It wasn't the same yeah. scene. That's what I was worried about. I'm like, this I looks had like uh, the same scene. So even though even though I was in a like a press only screening, people clapped when that when yeah when that yeah, scene yeah happened. They did yeah. you know and cheered. I did yeah oh, yes you know I was like yeah yeah, you know? yeah. So, <laughs> but I um. I, I don't, I'm trying to think because I don't want to give too much away, but yeah, he comes back and then, you know, even in that, you know, the final third of the film and there's the yeah. big action piece with, you know, there's Zod, you know, and really yeah. the Zod mm -hmm. thing is, it's just repeating what, and there's no knock on uh, Michael Shannon, but it's just because that's what it needed to be. It needed. Yeah, it's he, he, you know, he's it's, just there as part of the. He's the, there for the same exact the, the conflict. Reason, yeah, you know, he was yeah. in Man of Steel. It's just. Yeah. But it's it's a flip because the reality, the world is yeah. is different. You know. Yeah. Um, it's back, classic even, Back to the Future. It's like, oh no, we were back at this point in time, but things are different. How do we get things to play out where the universe doesn't doesn't get destroyed? Yeah. <laughs> you know? And it's just. Um, <clears throat> even with him, you know, with, you know, looting Kryptonian ships and shooting at them and, you know, all of this real, you yeah. know, Supergirl and on the flashes. And I, I never, even though that's like, 
not my thing. I was never once going, oh, this now, now it's ruined for me. You know, that never. I was like, yeah, yeah hell yeah. You know, so I I loved it. Loved the whole thing. Yeah. They I'm I'm guessing it's intentional that they they kept Keaton's Batman out of the Burton verse as much as possible. Like it's not like they go to Gotham, Anton first Gotham. Yeah. And he, you know it's like he's past that like gotham's not that anymore but we don't get to see it so it kind of works in this context of the film where it's like a next chapter for this batman and they get him in other situations where they don't so it doesn't stomp on it, it, it keeps it keeps batman 89 batman return special it keeps those their own thing they but nailed, you get to tell a new story with it they so. nailed wayne manor yeah inside in the Batcave. It's so Batman 89. Oh, in yeah. the Batcave. Yes. Yeah. yeah. And they And I know there's see... a li- I know there's little things that I've missed when you're in Wayne Manor that I'll yeah. pick up because I picked up yeah. some and I know there's more, you know? Yeah. Like even yeah, you could pause the pause in the trailers and be like, oh, there's that little weird, you know, machine on the in the Batcave. Oh, and it's a it's it's the same one that's in 89. Um, and I just love the way that some of the things in the in Wayne Manor work um of course you know in in 89 where you see how how some of the or in returns where you see like oh you've got the Iron Maiden that opens up and this and that and you see newer different versions of that in Wayne Manor in this in this movie but it's uh not I yeah so I'm just I'm I enjoy seeing new versions of that (laughs) yeah Yeah, in the yeah. in this way manner. Um, we won't. We'll finish up here. We won't give anything away, of course. Obviously, um, I think, I think people enjoy the cameos, mm-hmm. um, from DC, DC live action, DC past. Mm-hmm. Uh, we were talking before we started recording here. I I said now you know the nitpicky in me is like. Well, you did this for this long, and but couldn't you have, you know, threw in yeah. that or yeah. this and but yeah, and everyone will have their own preferences, you know, yeah, everyone and they'll be different. I get, you know, it had to be tough to what what they went with, you know, yeah. So, but not to I think, spoil I think it. people will it'll they'll like it and they'll w- won't wish there was more at the same time. Yeah. It's they the Rocky road way. of yeah. doing what they did for sure. Yes. And yeah. there's been some articles that have said things like, or that have confirmed like, Oh, it's confirmed X, X and Y cameos not in the movie. And then I saw the movie and I'm like, they could have put that cameo. There's no reason that cameo couldn't have been in the yes. movie. Yeah. Like yeah. zero reason. It would have been just fine and they should have done that, (laughs) you know, so it is that slippery slope of I loved what they did. But they could have done more or taken that out and put more of that in or more of this and less of that. I found Um, myself. It's a mixed bag of like it is because once you go there, you're not going to make every you're going to you're going to make people especially. But you're yes. gonna make them not happy at the same time. Does that make especially, sense? Especially, yeah. yes, especially when you see a movie like this, and it and it really feels like, well, this is the one shot they had to do that. Mm-hmm. If they do, they can't just do this again in another movie because it's gonna the impact will be lessened, or it it feels like this is a like a once in a generation opportunity for them to have done what they did, and they pulled off a crazy amount of cool stuff in it that I thought I would never see and I'm glad yeah. I saw and I'm glad yeah. I was in it. Yeah. But they could have done more yeah. <laughs> or took some it. things out. And, and that's being, less. that's being a fan yeah. and being a little it's bit. Totally. Thingy. That's okay. Yeah, that's totally. Okay. That's okay. Cause you could say that to somebody that's not a super fan of this stuff and be like, huh? Like, I, I don't know. Like, <laughs> like, you know, Rachel didn't even, you know, yeah. She, I'm gonna even, have to... she just thought it was, you know, it was cool. Yeah, you know? I'm gonna have to like. Yeah, when I see this with my girlfriend, I'm there was like, one oh. one other cameo. She had no clue what it was and why and why. And I had to explain. tell. You have to tell me after what it, that was. I, you can figure it out. And what and the cameo that I don't know if that ever existed. You know, uh, you're I'll tell, tell you me. afterwards. You I'll tell, tell you me. afterwards. Yeah. So yeah. Uh, <laughs> um. So what do you think about how the film? without giving away anything and not 
not that scene. <clears throat> yeah. Uh, but you know, the one that was blurred <laughs> out, you know, the people have said, but, but yeah. the, how the movie ended in general, you know, where it left everything. I had to like, on the drive home, I, I had to keep going. Like, wait, I had to keep reminding myself, like, wait, how did it end? What, what state was the world left in? What did they say? What? Oh, okay. 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 Cause when things were wrapping up, I kept thinking, oh, it's time travel. It's this, it's that. Like, oh, that's okay that that this happened or that happened because they'll fix it, you know, just like Barry. Oh, we can fix it. We can fix it. And then the movie kind of wraps up and you, and then, and then you have to, your mind catches up with it and you're like, oh, that, oh, okay. <laughs> so I'm kind of grappling with that part of it right now where I'm like, okay, this is how they left the universe. Okay. Um, I mean, I'm okay with it. I'm curious. It's, it's, they really kind of did have their cake and eat it too, where they can kind of do whatever they want now and just yes. be like, oh, that was where the Flash reset stuff. I don't know. Like, they, they, they do enough. They, they don't do, too, they do just enough to, it's not like, lord of the rings where there's like 10 endings to show like this is where everything has ended up and here's james gunn superman and here's whatever it's like eh. well i mean there's some things that will definitely make you start questioning like oh what's what's happened but it's nothing that any future film can't address in their own way or not you know which is kind of a cool exactly yeah like they don't have to do anything they could leave it there it could be a springboard for new stuff or new stuff could completely ignore it and it would be just fine you know yeah um so it's cool i'll just go back to you know once once you mess with the past is it ever ever really going to be the same as it's as it originally was you know i was jazzed you I know? was I was excited. So uh <laughs> and that that last scene was was it was cool. It was cool. It was, I clapped. It was, it was I it was funny. My theater loved it. Yeah, and and I thought Ezra Miller was really really good in that in that in that yeah. that scene. <laughs> uh, and I two things I want to note. Um uh, and one of them speaks to you what what you said and I said this in the review is that it's kind of where it's homage to all of DC live action, where all of it happened and all of it exists somewhere. Mm-hmm. It's not mm-hmm. gone, you know? Yeah. Including, you know, the DCEU yes. and all of that stuff. Yeah. And perfect. The fans of that, mm-hmm. I don't want to name them here, but mm-hmm. they should appreciate that that's that part that piece of dc on film history is Mm -hmm. is really um is is uh spotlighted and and championed you know at at, in the beginning right i agree i agree and it makes me it makes me appreciate the hell out of what has transpired it's one of those things where this movie acknowledges how messy being a superhero can be and how messy like this universe can get you know mm-hmm. it keep the way keaton explains it not to spoil the scene but the way keaton explains it in the movie was a, like a perfect analogy for like what has con- yeah. led up to this but yeah. and it's like but you got to be okay with it and you can't change it and all this kind of stuff mm-hmm. um so it you know in a really meta way which is great for the flash. It makes me appreciate what's come before even more. And so now I can kind of, I'm excited now to kind of rewatch some of this stuff and be like, okay, like we have, especially moving forward, like you go from Batman 89 all the way to, to now and you can congeal it together and it's storytelling and it's these characters. And it's a lot of why we love these characters and Mm -hmm. explore you know, our own lives and stuff. It really yeah. makes make me excited for DC. Like, 
in general, to me, as a story I'll say it again. Music. Yeah. To me, all of it is still there somewhere. Yeah. You know, and if you want to yeah. enter, if you if you want to um, enter that universe, go grab your Blu-ray and put it in and watch. You yeah. know, subscribe to Max. <laughs> or yeah, exactly. You know? We're not. That's a Stream free plug. Max. Yeah, we're not yeah. sponsored by Max. So yes, okay. Um, <laughs> so I have so much more to talk about with this film, mm -hmm. but I have to really go into spoilers. So yeah, we're gonna uh, we're gonna end it here. Um, there is a final post credit scene. Yes. So I don't know if you. I don't know. I did. I was like. Okay, I really didn't have to be in there, but whatever. If you if you like that, and that stuff, was my they, theater's reaction too. They're like, huh? <laughs> I mean, and I'm like, are they going to change it again before next week? I know this you're was not to be the final going cut, to miss but I'm anything like, if you if you uh, <clears throat> yeah if you if you get out when they start the credits. But I will say that there was a, this old crusty reviewer next to me. Uh, there was a seat between us, and you know, and I guess another one came by that he knew, and he goes. The one guy was still sitting down and he's like, uh, he goes, you're leaving. He said, well, I'm going to see if there's one of those post credit scenes. And the guy was, that was leaving going, oh, there, there's not one. This is, this is DC. This is not, this is not Marvel. This is not the MCU. And I said, there's a post credit scene. And they both, so they both stood there and waited until they saw it. And then anyway, uh, so I'm sure, and I know we'll dress, the flash in more detail mm -hmm. on a, probably two or three more podcasts. I'm sure there'll yeah. be another one for sure on the, on the, I'm going to do one with Lauer on the social hour. Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. I know that uh, all the guys will, will get on the various shows to talk about it. So, mm -hmm. and you know, and Ryan will be back. We're we'll, we'll going to talk about sports at some point. So, cause that's yeah. so much more. And then you're so going to get me more. on that show about the, about the multiverse and else worlds. That's a whole different <laughs> tangent. You made it good because, for a reason, James Gunn and Peter Safran. I, okay. Yeah, I'm. Yeah, it, they would be. And I feel like it's you know you don't look a gift horse in the mouth. It's like you just got Keaton back. Come on, guys. But like, yeah, better use him while he's doing Keaton Renaissance, where he's doing this. Yeah. He's doing Beetlejuice too. Like, come on, man. Come on, get him back. Yeah. And I'm like, it's not going to yeah. matter that you've got Robert Pattinson in the mm -hmm. Batman universe it already doesn't he's just and he, you've just got and you're gonna have this brave and the bold <laughs> batman coming up at some point yeah. in, the, in the new dcu no one cares yeah. just they'll go watch it you know because it's batman yeah. and it's keaton so all right ryan you got anything you want to plug oh just follow me at on twitter at smb underscore ryan follow my super mario brothers the movie archive on twitter at smb movie and on the internet at smbmovie.com things are just nuts for us right now because the the animated illumination movies out and everybody's oh and it's the 30th anniversary it was just 30th anniversary may 28th so got a brand new site update up with a lot of uh good article roundups and and we did a bunch of interviews uh for you know as representatives of the website for a bunch of different uh you know outlets um and so all those links and all those stories and uh retrospectives are up on our website right now at smbmovie.com very cool. Uh, for me, just go to Batman on Film, Batman-on-Film.com. Celebrating our 25th anniversary. Yes, have Ryan have ever told you the story about how I started Batman on Film in 1998 on a web On web a web TV, TV yeah. Yeah, mm -hmm. I don't know. Mm -hmm. I rarely tell that story. So, yeah. What, yeah. Uh, uh, this podcast and several other are part of the Batman Podcast Network. Just go to Batman on Film, find the logo or this the word says podcast you'll find the drop down box check out all those shows you want to help support batman on film uh these things don't pay they don't run they don't pay for themselves okay they you know you do gotta maintain them patreon patreon.com p-a-t-r-e-o-n.com slash batman on film uh there's cool speaking of batman 25 you can go to bat uh, t public t public.com slash batman on film get you one of those cool batman 25 there's shirts for like me and announced the Rachel War and even Ryan War. And Ryan yep. War, the last time he was on the social hour. I did. Uh, Justin Kowalski came out with that awesome logo. Check that out. And that's all I got. Announced Rachel will finish up here and we will catch you next time. 
Thanks for listening to the BOF Social Hour, Jet's official vlog and podcast on Batman on Film. Follow Jet on Twitter, at Batman on Film. Follow the BOF News Feed on Twitter, at the Batman on Film. For Jet and everyone at BOF, I'm announcer Rachel. Authoritative, definitive, the original. Batman on Film, established in 1998.